How's it going? And welcome back to the Endurance Athlete Training Plan series. The second part of this series is going to go further in depth into what is included in the program that I mentioned in part one. If you have not checked out that part of the video, please go back and check it now so you are able to get the full breadth of the content that I have been putting out. This is a series that I will be releasing over the next few weeks, so definitely tune in for future videos. So like and subscribe down below. What I'm going to go over in part two is go more in depth about what testing and retesting is as far as a training plan goes. This is a component that usually gets missed and is usually only done at the beginning of a training plan creation. Testing helps you to create goals and those goals will help you create smaller plans in order to help you achieve that goal, whether it is smaller goals to help you build up to that larger goal of completing your, your A race for the season. The biggest thing that I see that gets missed in a lot of training plans is that there is no retesting or the retesting is very minimalized and does not kind of replicate or go back and compare the data from your original testing to the newer testing that you were doing. When we miss these different components within our testing and retesting, you start to lose data. And when we start to lose data, you start to lose how on track you are with your goals. How much further do you have to go before you reach that goal? Or do you need to go back and change your plan so that you're able to get back on track to achieve the goal that you want? Another thing that I see that it gets missed is the fact that a lot of athletes kind of, they lose that focus. They lose, they start to lose that motivation. They start to lose the, the, the why of what they're trying to do in their plan to achieve something. So testing and retesting is a good way to not only bring in the accountability factor, like I mentioned last time, but it also helps to reestablish that why of what you're doing and why you want to do it for yourself or for the loved ones that you're doing it for or the team that you're with. For those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Robert Berghorn, physical therapist and owner of Ascent Physical Therapy here on Long Island, New York. Now let's break into a little bit more of what I mean by testing and retesting. When we test ourselves, we're seeing where we currently are. And when we see where we currently are, we can set a baseline. We can work on different applications that will allow you to build up to your goal from your starting point that we established during testing. Now, what is the point of retesting? Retesting allows you to see how much progress you've made, allows you to go back and see if you need to change your goal, allows you to see if you need to change your, your planning, your workouts. Maybe something happened with life. Maybe something happened with injury. You need to always be reevaluating and evaluating your plan to make sure that it is still fitting into what you want to achieve. Does it sound like a lot of work? It can be, depending if you're doing it the right way. But if you have the right setup and you have the right testing ahead of time, you're able to figure out where you're able to go from. If you don't do any kind of testing or if you do, don't do any retesting, you lose sight of where you're going. You lose sight of the direction to get to your goals. Now, when should you be testing? Testing should be done either at the beginning of your preseason when you start to be training, when you're starting out to be in a sport, this is either testing done on your own to see where you are. Say if you're if you're a runner and you want to test how far you're able to do or how quickly you're able to do a mile, go out and run a mile, see how it is. You don't need any special equipment. You don't need any personal trainer. You don't need a professional like me. You don't need a exercise physiologist. You don't need anybody to pay for it in order to do that. You just go out, you need a stopwatch, you do a mile. You've done your test. Now what? When we retest, the important part is to give yourself a little bit of time so that you're able to progress. Whether you're a cyclist, a runner, a swimmer, a triathlete, or any other kind of endurance athlete, we wanna make sure that when we are testing, we're testing it at an appropriate time. Now this could be, I wouldn't recommend doing any kind of initial testing while you're in season, because you should be already at your peak and it's going to be hard to get to a new goal when you're already in season. The time that I would focus on in, in your initial testing would be either in the beginning of preseason at a portion or towards the middle of preseason at the latest, towards the end of the competitive season, 
or in the beginning of down training. When you start in the beginning of down training, you're able to tailor down your workouts, but also try and reevaluate what you did in competition and then also kind of filter out what didn't work, create something that did work and work yourself to your new goals for next year. As far as retesting goes, when you want to retest, it's going to be periodically throughout your season, depending on how large or small that it is. It depends on how many races you have. It depends on how big your preseason is. So say you finish your, your competition season in September or October. If you start your testing there, coming off of preseason to see exactly where you are when you're starting a new training plan, Will you be able to get accurate results? Maybe, maybe not. You may be at your peak, you may be completely fatigued, and you may not have the best results. Therefore, if you wait at least a week or so, you'll be able to kind of rest, recover a little bit, and then do a test. If we are doing your testing, your initial testing, during the end of your competition season, you want to give yourself at least a week or two in order for your body to fully recover so that you are able to give yourself an appropriate measurement of your performance. You don't want to be performing when you are having issues with fatigue or muscle soreness or any kind of discomfort or pain you've been dealing with throughout the season. You want to make sure that you're fully rested and able to perform appropriately, whether it is an actual performance test or whether it is simple broken down assessment of your joints. And we'll get further into that later in the video. As far as retesting goes, you want to use the same distance or the same kind of test that you use in your initial testing to be able to go back and compare. You wanna make sure you're getting the same data that you would as if you did your initial test again, therefore a retest. These retests you want to be periodically done throughout preseason and also during competition, se right before competition season. These retests will make sure that you're going to peak at the appropriate time during your season so that you're able to compete at the highest level you can possibly achieve and do that without risk of injury. Now, could we get injured during our training season? Definitely. That is always a possibility and you should always be factoring that into your plans. Now, if we do have that injury pop up, it may be a time to do a little bit of retesting and not necessarily the performance test, but further other tests that I will be going over later in this video. And this is something that you need to do in order to make sure that despite the injury, why did the injury happen? what could have caused it, what factors were leading up to it, and at the same time, what we could do in the future in order to prevent something like this from happening again. If it was an acute injury and you fell off your bike or for some reason, or if you tripped over a route and you fell while you were running, that sometimes is something that we can't avoid. And that's definitely something that can happen. But if it's something like a stress fracture or a shin splints, or you're swimming and you have rotator cuff issues, that's something that could have been avoided by doing testing. A lot of the overuse injuries that we experience, especially as endurance athletes, is something that can be avoided in most cases. If you do develop an injury, you want to make sure that you are recording your data so that you can provide the professional that you're dealing with, either a physical therapist, chiropractor, doctor, with the appropriate data that you have to make sure that you are on the right track or to help them evaluate what your best solution is to kind of recover the fastest. Now when doing your testing, you want to make sure that you're doing both gross movement and also finer movements. That means you can either be doing performance kind of activities like doing your sport itself, doing like time trials by doing a 5k run or doing a 10k or doing a 40k bike ride. Whatever you decide is a distance that you want to achieve, you can start there. That is definitely one way to go about it, but it's also one of the most overly used ways Doing performance testing is not exactly what's going to leave you with the results that you need in order to make sure that you're getting to your plan appropriately and also being able to avoid injury and fatigue during the season. You want to do testing that not only involves the multiple joints that you need and the muscles that you need to perform your sport, but also the appropriate joint motions to ensure that you're going through full free range motion without restriction and being able to do so without any compensation. If you are not very adept in this kind of testing, you want to make sure that you are getting in front of a physical therapist, exercise physiologist, chiropractor, or a coach that you are com comfortable with and confident with 
to be able to give you the guidance that you need to assess these kind of things. You want to make sure that they, that they are qualified to do so and able to interpret the data appropriately so that they can give you the results and the solutions that you need. Now what do I mean by individual testing? Now that testing could be each and every single one of your joints that are involved in your sport. So if you're a runner, you really don't have to do anything for assessment other than going from your neck all the way down. However, if you want to be a really good runner, you also need still to assess your elbows, your shoulders, your wrists. And you may be asking why. When we have compensations that occur, whether it's in our neck, our shoulders, our, our thoracic spine, or our upper back, that can throw off the force distribution and the transfer of energy from one side of your body to the other. Now, if I lost some of you there, that may be because you're a little bit more of a beginner and that's completely okay. When we make contact with the ground, forces travel up through our body and they need to be able to transfer from one side to the other. Therefore, if your upper body and your lower body are not working together appropriately, you can throw off the amount of forces that are going through, which could lead to compensations and thus to injury. Therefore, the testing and retesting is that much more important, making sure that your entire body is appropriate for the sport that you are doing. Regardless of what sport you're performing in, you need to make sure you have the flexibility, mobility, and ability to stabilize your joints with motion for the duration of your sport. There are many tests that you can go through. There are many different things. Everything applies to each individual person. These are just a few examples for each joint that I want you to go, be able to go through and do so with freedom. If you have freedom, then your joints are moving freely and appropriate. Gross mo movement patterns are something that you need to assess as well. Being able to do an overhead squat, keeping everything in line between your shoulders, your knees, and your ankles, making sure that your forces are in line with each other to ensure that you're appropriately giving force distribution. Other tests that you can do at home that are very simple to incorporate include an eight inch step down, which is basically the height of your normal steps in your house. Therefore, you can just easily take a video camera, set it up in front of you, do a step down, and then assess to make sure that your alignment is appropriate as you step down. If you have compensations or you have changes in movement patterns compared to one side or the other, or you notice it on both sides, could mean that you're lacking the stability or the mobility in a certain area based on compensations that you're making. Now these compensations may need an appropriate evaluation by a physical therapist or another professional to ensure that you're doing this assessment appropriately. Other assessments that you can do also include a double footed jump, single legged jump, long jump, high jump, and a single legged squat. Each of these tests will give you information that is different depending on the mobility and the stability restrictions that you have during your movements. Let's take a recap of everything that we talked about today. We talked about the importance of testing and retesting. We talked about the individual tests that you can perform, both gross motor, where you're moving through multiple joints at the same time, or individual joints that you're looking at to ensure that you have the appropriate mobility and stability. We talked about the importance of testing and why it's important. If we don't do the appropriate tests and we don't find the compensations that we are making or the restrictions in mobility that we have, we are putting excessive stress on one joint or the other, depending if it's the restricted one or the joint that's above or below, which can lead to injury. The point of a training plan, the appropriate training plan, is to find something that will prevent injury. Preventing injury is our goal to ensure that we achieve our goals in the fastest period of time and be able to do so safely and happily. If we do these tests and we keep continue to do retests throughout your season, you will ensure yourself much closer to having a much happier, healthier season with less restrictions in performance. If you have not gone and checked out the first video of the series, please do that now. Again, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel so you're able to get the further content in the series as well as other future content I'll be putting out. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I would love to help you out and be able to answer you directly. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in part three. Talk to you guys soon.